I'm Evangelist Gabriel Fernandez and God has called and commissioned me to preach the good news of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friend, I encourage you as I share a message with you and I pray for you today. Be in agreement, connect in faith, believe and you shall receive in the name of Jesus. Hello and welcome to this special video brought to you by GFM United Prayer and Revival Ministry. It's so good to be with you today, my dear friend. It is indeed another day that God has given us by His grace and by His special grace, we will make it through. Our God is good and our God is gracious and He is with us. He never leaves us and He never forsakes us. And in the times when we need to be ready, He wakes us up and He prepares us so that we can be ready. As you know, my dear friend, today is Tuesday, and last week Tuesday we had a special guest in studio. His name is John. He's back again with us today, and we're going to continue the discussion that we began. Last week he shared on his dream, where basically in that dream he had a vision of Christ, and he heard a voice saying, I'm coming. And he's going to expound on that a bit. He's going to just share the key points of that dream, and we're going to go into scripture, and we're going to see what the Bible says about the coming of Christ. It's so important to focus in and to do what the Bible says we should do. Also, the Bible shows us the way that we must go, the way that we must walk in. And it's so important that we follow what the Bible says. This will keep us on course and will keep us in the right place that we need to be. Now, first of all, I want to thank all those who sent in their emails concerning dreams and visions that they've had, concerning the end times, concerning the coming of Christ, and it was so good to read some of those emails and I'm sure at some stage we will share some of them. Now, John, I just want to welcome you once again into the studio. It was so good to have you last week. And I want to thank you for your obedience, sharing the vision that Christ gave you concerning his coming. And I want us to go into scripture and see what the Bible says concerning this. But before we start, I want you to just give us the key points of your dream. For my dear friend who's watching, what we'll do is we'll reference the video where we spoke about the dream in the description and uh, we'll also have a link to that video towards the end of this video. It'll pop up on the screen. But over to you, John. Give us some key points from your dream. Thank you, Gabriel. Good to be with you again in studio. So there were a number of highlights that stood out to me in the dream. The first was the prayer that I prayed right at the beginning. Lord, give me the grace to share this message and give the listeners the grace to hear. The next was the question that I put forward to the congregation, which was, what is on your mind and heart as you sit and listen to me? The next thing was my response to that very question. So I asked them a question and then I responded. And I said, some of you are thinking about Sunday lunch and they actually laughed. Um, so they did respond and they laughed and I said some of you have been thinking about Sunday lunch because you've been preparing it for a long time and it's almost time to be served and you're concerned about whether you know whether or not it's going to be enjoyed something on those lines the next thing I said was some of you are concerned about your wife because it's her birthday today and you haven't bought her a gift and then, of course, the main highlight of the dream was the final question I put forward, or the final statement, which was, I said something on the lines of, the most important question is what is on God's heart and God's mind. And the response to that was probably the, the biggest highlight of all, because the response was, tell my church I'm coming back. And at that point, the dream actually changed, and it wasn't me saying that, but I heard a loud voice and there was brilliant light everywhere and the voice simply said tell my church very strongly tell my church I'm coming back hallelujah that that sounds glorious it must have been quite an experience even as you had that vision now I want to go a bit deeper into this I want to focus in in the first two questions what do you suppose the meaning of the answers to the first two questions you asked are well I'm still very much praying about that asking the Lord to reveal the meaning in a deeper way to me. Uh, but I had two thoughts about this. Uh, the first is that his people are very occupied with their lives. They're very busy. Everyone's busy with this or with that. 
In fact, the Bible says in Matthew 24 verse 38, For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And that's just to highlight that people, even when the Lord returns, will be busy about their lives. The second thought that I had was that those questions that, or or those statements I made had to do with concerns that people had. So people were concerned about this or about that. And it was as if it was highlighting that the Lord is also concerned. Because the next question was addressed to God, what's on God's heart and God's mind. And then his concern was stated, tell my church that I'm coming back. So this made me feel that God is is concerned about where his church is in terms of readiness for his coming. Indeed, in this time period, many people are busy. People are focused on different things. They're focused on things that are not necessarily unimportant or less important, but they are not the most important things that born-again believers should focus on. They're focused on various other different things like making money, setting that as number one, getting material blessings, gaining various different things out there. Whereas the Bible says we should seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things should be added unto us. So we get busy in all these things that are not as important as the most important things, which is focusing on the kingdom of God and His righteousness and the relationship with God. Now, I want to focus in on the last part of your dream, where he said that where the scene changed and you heard a loud voice say, Tell my church I'm coming. That part is so scriptural. There are so many verses that actually talk about the coming of Christ. And you know, sometimes as born again believers, it's easy to get into the swing of things and uh, to get so comfortable doing what we're doing that we forget that the Bible actually says at a certain day, Christ is going to come back. This is why it's so important that we have these broadcasts. Now, why do you think Jesus is sending this message to born again believers at this time? That's the first question I want to ask you. And secondly, let's discuss, what does Jesus mean when he says, I'm coming back? What does it mean, the saying, I'm coming back? Well, from the dream, the strongest impression, as I mentioned earlier, that I I received, even when I woke up, it was the strongest uh, thought in my mind, is that the Lord is concerned about the church. And he's concerned that we are not ready for his coming. It may happen very suddenly and many of his people will be caught unawares. And that's why um, you've actually launched these series of broadcasts in which we'll also discuss at at a later stage what does it mean to be ready. So that is on the Lord's heart, that his church is ready. As the Bible says, spotless, free of blemish, beautiful, He's coming back for a bride that's that's perfectly ready and adorned. To answer your second question, indeed the Lord is coming back and there's actually several scriptures that that reference his return. There's actually two main thoughts. The first thought is his return for the church, as I've mentioned, also known as the catching up or the rapture, and then his return to reign on earth. That's at the end of the, the tribulation, when he destroys the Antichrist and he comes and sets up his kingdom for the thousand years. And if I just read John 14 verse 3, he said, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That is so powerful. I I love the words in that scripture. It says, in my father's house are many mansions. Meaning that when you give your life to Jesus and you follow after him, you are not following after him in vain. You're not following after him without a treasure, without a reward. There's a great reward that Jesus has for you. And he is preparing that reward. And once he finishes once he's ready he will come again to come and get his saints to come and get the church 
As you said, John, there are so many uh, scriptural references over here. I've got two that I want to read over here. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 15 to verse 18. It says, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of our Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Verse 16, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then those who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Verse 18 says, Therefore comfort one another with these words. Now, another scriptural reference is in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24 from verse 29 to verse 44. It says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with power and great glory. Verse 31, And he will send his angels with a great sound from one end of the heaven to the other. We saw this also in the previous passage of scripture that I read to you. There will be a great sound that will take place. Verse 40 goes on and says, Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Verse 41, Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. Verse 42, Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour the Lord is coming. Verse 43, But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Verse 44, Therefore, you also should be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Hallelujah, that is powerful. The scripture thoroughly covers this, John. It covers the fact that Christ is coming and also covers the fact that it is not known the exact time and the exact hour. And therefore we know that anyone who says Christ is coming on this specific day, this specific hour is lying. The Bible itself says no one knows the time or the hour when Christ will come. We can tell the seasons. Just as in when it's rainy season, we can see various things that we look for that show us the rainy season. We look at the clouds, we look at various things in the weather patterns, and it shows us that this is the season we're in. In the same time, in the end times, there are certain signs and certain things that we'll look for that show us these are the end times that we're in. And currently what I've seen is many of those things are showing. And that is also a good point to show us that we should be ready for the coming of Christ. We should be ready every day. Do you have anything else that you want to share from Scripture concerning this? Well, the further Scripture uh, related to the one that you've actually mentioned uh, comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, uh, from verse 26. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Actually, it's referring to the same event um, of his coming. And then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds from the farthest part of the earth to the furthest part of heaven. So we see that this event will take place. And if you actually search and see, there's many arguments on when it will take place. Some say it will happen pre-tribulation. Some say it will happen in the midst of the tribulation. Some say it will happen at the end of the tribulation. But I think when it happens does not matter as much. It matters, but it does not matter as much as us being ready for it to happen. And that is the reason why we are having this broadcast. My dear friend, wherever you are, the reason for these broadcasts is so that you can be encouraged and you can be warned to be ready in time. You see, why would we want to know when the coming of Christ is? So that we can prepare and we can be ready. The man or the woman who would have fear for the coming of Christ is one who is not ready. And therefore, if you want to live a life of boldness and courage, a born-again believer life that makes a difference where you are not afraid of what happens tomorrow, then you should always live as though you are ready. No one knows the exact hour, the exact second, the exact time, but we should be ready. 
and you'll see this even as we go along. The Bible says in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, from verse 2, it says, For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. So the fact that a thief doesn't announce when he comes, and it's just suddenly, it's a time when we least expect it, we should always aim to be ready. We should always aim to be in the right place. Furthermore, in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, it says, Of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And one thing that is key that we understand is the Scripture shows us in the passage of Scripture I read to you from the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, from verse 15 to verse 18. We will join Him in the air when He comes. We will be taken up. We'll be snatched up. We'll be caught up, if I can say. You know, sometimes we give it the term, the rapture. But I like to rather call it in my own meaning, in my own terms, being caught up with Christ. I'll read that passage of scripture to you one more time. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, from verse 15 to verse 18. For we say this to you by the word of God, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. So there will be a great shout. And that will be a glorious day, isn't it so, John? It's going to be a great day. Can you imagine a great shout going out? We're all going on with our day-to-day -day lives and our day-to-day -day business. And suddenly we hear a great shout in the skies, in the heavens. And it proceeds from there. It goes on and says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. So we'll hear a shout and we'll hear the trumpet blast of God. And when we all hear this as born-again believers, we want to be in that place where we know what is happening. We are not caught by surprise. We are not fearful. We know exactly what is happening and what is taking place. Now it goes on and says, And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, John, I've got a question that I want us to discuss. We need to answer all sides to this. And we need to see what the scripture says. Do the children of God need to be afraid of the coming of Christ? I know I touched on this already, but I want your thoughts. Share with my dear friend who's watching what your thoughts are. No, not at all. Unless, of course, you're not ready and that day catches you unawares. It's actually going to be a victorious occasion. When, we, when we're caught up in the clouds with him, there will be rejoicing and laughter and dancing. I mean, at the end of the day, you're meeting the person that you, that you love and that you know loves you more than anything. I know there are people who are, who are afraid and they maybe watched movies and they became afraid of you know, what to expect. But, but if you're a born-again believer and you've got Jesus in your heart, and you're living for him, there's absolutely nothing to be afraid of. In fact, if I read from 1 Corinthians verse 15, from verse 51, it says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. So in an instant, our bodies will be transformed. In fact, verse 52 says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality verse 54 so when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory so that is the end of death. It's the end of sin for us. It's the end of pain and sorrow and striving and toiling. So it will indeed be a glorious day when we actually will be caught up in his presence and will be in his presence forever and forever. And that will be a glorious time. There will be much rejoicing. There will be much shouting and singing praise. There will be such joy and happiness. Imagine being in the presence of God. Wow. Imagine being so close to God and all worries taken away, all stress is taken away. 
All worry about tomorrow is gone. You know, when we were young, we never used to worry about anything. We knew our parents would take care of everything. But when we grow older, we get responsibilities, we get various different things. And you know, that in itself, speaking about when we're young and we never used to worry, that's a sermon in itself that we should discuss one day. You know, having childlike faith. But getting back to this, when we go and be with the Lord, there won't be the burdens, the responsibility, the various different things that we need to look out for. Like in that dream, people were worried. They were looking for cooking food, Sunday lunch. They were preparing, thinking in their minds, what will they do? They were looking about the next week, the next day that's beginning, uh, Monday, uh, what they're going to do at work, what they're going to say to their bosses, their employees. And these are the worries of this earth. Actually, on that day, furthermore, all sicknesses will drop off, all demonic bondage will instantly fall away, all, um, all issues that we may have been carrying will instantly disappear. And as the Bible says, this corruptible must put on incorruption. And for those of us who are, are there and alive, this will happen in an instant. In the twinkling of an eye, we will be transformed and caught up with the Lord in the clouds. Hallelujah. And a thought comes to mind, my dear friend, no matter how many mistakes you make, stand up again, repent, come to Christ, come back to God again. You know, I love the fact that Christ saw that we as human beings are weak in our own strength. And as much as we want to do something and we want to live in a certain way, we make mistakes. So he made it in such a way that we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And that permits us to come back when we make mistakes. From this point in time, surely being human beings will make mistakes at certain points. But the key of it is that we must come back. If you find yourself in a place where you have drifted away from God, where you've grown cold, this is an opportunity. This time when this message is going out, this time when this message is echoed by many believers around the world, this is an opportunity to come back to Christ, to recommit your life. And even going on, going forward, as we await the coming of Christ, whenever it might be, it might be tomorrow, it might be next week, it might be next year, it might be after a few years, it might be after a few hundred years. No one knows that day. As the Bible says in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24, verse 32, it says, Now we learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So we only know the signs, but we don't know the exact time. But the point of what I'm trying to say is, when you make a mistake, get up, try again, and press on. Press on to this victorious day. Because once you reach this day and you are caught up with Christ, you have sealed the deal. You have sown in corruptibility and reaped in incorruptibility. You have sealed the deal. You shall be saved. You shall be born again. You shall be with Christ for eternity. You shall be with him even in his rule and reign. Stay close to Jesus. Be ready. And don't beat yourself up. There is no guilt and condemnation for those who are in Christ. Be ready and be joyful await the coming of Christ. And when you make mistakes, simply come back to Christ and He will open up the way for you. Now, we're going to go into a time of prayer, John. Uh, once again, I want you to pray with me. We're going to pray with our dear friend who's watching this video. And we're going to trust God for God to do what only He can do. For God to help my dear friend who's watching this video. That if my dear friend is in a place where they're not ready, where they might have moved away from God, where they might have grown cold, in the walk, it's very possible for many of these things to happen because we face numerous attacks. And it's only by the grace of God that we can continue. It's by the grace of God that we stand strong, that we keep on going. So it's very possible for one to grow cold. We need to pray for our dear friend who's watching this video that in whatever place my dear friend is, my dear friend will receive from God and be put in the right place so that even when Christ comes, my dear friend will be ready and my dear friend will go up. So now, my dear friend, we're going to begin to pray. As we begin, we're going to begin with some praise. We're going to praise God. And as we discern His presence, then we'll begin to pray. And I trust, know, and believe God is going to do what only He can do. So wherever you are, just begin to praise Him. Praise Him in your own words. Father, we just thank You for Your grace. We thank You for Your mercy. We thank You for Your love. We thank You for Your abundance 
of mercy towards us. You, so Lord. much so that your word even shows us the key milestones in our journey with you. The key events that will happen in the end times so that we can be ready. We give you praise and thank you for this. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for this place where we're recording, the GFM United Prayer and Revival Ministry Studios, in this particular studio that's still under construction, but it's here. We can still work, we can still get things done. We thank you and we give you praise for this. And we thank you that we shall go up and we shall be ready in the season for what you are doing. We thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who came and died for us and made a way for us so that we could be restored back to you. We thank you for the good news of the gospel. We thank you that we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. My dear friend, I discern God's presence. And even as his presence is here, let us go into a time of prayer. We're going to begin to pray. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray for you. Then I'm going to ask my good friend John here to also pray for you. And we'll conclude. And I trust and believe God will bless you. As we begin to pray, I want to encourage you to do three things. The first and the most important is just welcome the Holy Spirit. Say this out loud. Say, Holy Spirit of God, I welcome you. Come in this place. Touch me. Heal me. And make me whole again. Prepare me for the coming of Christ. Help me to be ready in season and out of season. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. My dear friend, the second thing that I want to encourage you to do as we pray, comment down below in the comment section and agree with me. There is so much power in agreement. And even as you comment and agree, God is going to bless you. The third thing, if you've got a prayer request and you want me to pray with you and for you, simply go to my website, go to www.gabrielfernandezministries.org and click on daily prayer list. Fill in your prayer request, click submit. It'll come through to us and we're going to pray and trust God with you. But in saying that, let us begin. Father, I pray for my dear friend. Release the grace, even in this season, that my dear friend, your dear son, my dear friend, your dear daughter, will be ready. No one knows the time and the hour when your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will come. But help us by your grace to be ready. I thank you for this powerful anointing here in studio. And I thank you that this anointing is touching my dear friend. In any area where my dear friend is trusting you and saying, Father, please intervene. Even today, as we've shared this message, intervene divinely. Change the situation in my dear friend's life. Where my dear friend is trusting you for deliverance, deliver my dear friend. Where my dear friend is trusting you to be set free from any chain, set my dear friend free. Where my dear friend is trusting you for breakthrough, give my dear friend breakthrough. Where my dear friend is trusting you for miracles, signs and wonders, do what only you can do. Set my dear friend free and prepare my dear friend to be ready for the coming of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now, John, I want you to pray, and then we'll conclude, and we'll be back again next week, because we need to continue. This is so important that we cover all that Christ wants us to do. Over to you. Father God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for giving us your Son. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for this revelation that you've given us, and this reminder Lord, that you are indeed coming back. And Lord, you've shared this with us because you want us to be ready. And you want your people and your church to start preparing. So that, Lord, at your coming, not one will be left behind, Lord. That we shall all be ready. And we shall all be one. And we shall all be caught up and join you there in the clouds, Lord. And there'll be rejoicing and singing and gladness. Lord, we just say thank you. Because, Lord, you love your people so much that you don't want to see a single person left behind. Lord, you're calling each person to repentance. And, Lord, we thank you that you're giving strength, Lord, to each person to begin to change their lives and come back to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just pray, give each person power, Lord, to live for you. Give each person the power, Lord, to correct the things in their life, Lord, that are displeasing to you and to live for you and to prepare so that, Lord, when you come, not miss your coming. In Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. John, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us here in studio and thank you for being so obedient. Thank you for joining us on this special broadcast. We don't do this for ourselves. We don't do this for money or fame. We don't do this so that the whole world can know our names. We do this to glorify Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and to lift him up. And we do it as a seed into the lives of believers. And I'm so happy and I'm so blessed that you've chosen to set aside the work that you have to do. I know you're a very busy person, but you set aside the work that you have to do to be here in studio so that if there is someone who needs to hear this message, they can hear it. And that is a seed that you have sown that will definitely be returned back to you hundredfold. We will be blessed and you will go up. I thank God for your life. My dear friend, follow that example. As God tells you to do something, be obedient and God will bless you. Because as you are obedient, whatever you do in obedience to Christ is a seed that you are sowing. And you will reap of that seed. You will reap in blessing, you will reap in promotion, you will reap in growth, you will reap in progress. So sow the right seeds as you follow Christ. Now I bless you, my dear friend. In closing, may you be blessed and may you go up. May you succeed and may you prosper. May God be with you even now in the end times. And may you go up and enjoy the goodness and mercy of God. May growth, progress, and success follow you now and forevermore. And may you always be ready. As there's a statement that says, plan as though you will live forever, but live as though it's your last day. In the same way, may God give you the grace that you'll be able to plan as though you will live forever, but live as though it is your last day, so that you can always be ready for the coming of Christ. And in context of that, I mean living ready, living with your life with God, knowing that you are in the place where God wants you to be. And remember, in closing, it is not by works, but it is by grace. It is not by our accomplishments in the flesh that we achieve this reconciliation back to God, but it is by His grace. It is not by our works that we are taken up when Christ comes but it is by His grace. And this is why we should take hold of what God has made available to us and stay with Him. God bless you, my dear friend, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, shalom and goodbye. In saying that, my dear friend, we come to the end of this video. If you are blessed by this video and you feel led to donate or to partner with us to support us in this work that we are doing, then you can do so through PayPal or Patreon. All the links are provided in the description. Until next time, God bless you and goodbye.